Sorry, I'm squinting through this entire video because I'm like staring at the sun through icicles. Hey guys, um, I've been thinking about making a video for a while talking about how I started my transition, I guess, going from basically early childhood through when I actually transitioned. I kind of wanted to tell you guys how it went for me. So there's not really necessarily like an age that I thought I was meant to be a boy at. I don't think I ever really thought I was meant to be a girl, honestly. It didn't really occur to me that I couldn't have... I couldn't be a man, honestly. <laughs> uh, it, it never crossed my mind that it wasn't an option. Uh, the home that I grew up in was very open, very... different, maybe, than most. Um, I was homeschooled from, well, forever, <laughs> till I went to college. So just the whole, I, I never had any so social constructs around me. The people that I did know were also homeschooled. Uh, I really didn't have any friends that were in school, so I never really had that structure around me. I do remember when I was a little kid, I always wanted to uh, be able to pee standing up which I'm sure a lot of people have had that. But my brother and I would um, discuss how he could pee and I couldn't standing up. So I, I would always make a way, as awkward as it is, uh, so I could face the toilet and pee at the same time. I always really wore his hand-me-downs. I don't remember ever having clothes that were maybe specifically for me. Uh, so I was completely happy with that. Um, I got to wear all of his boys' clothes, and but, uh, I was thrilled to wear them. I always felt comfortable. I really never had an issue with anything until I hit puberty. I can distinctly remember when I first started growing um, breast tissue. I came downstairs to my parents and said that something didn't feel right, and my mom told me what it was. And, that I'd start developing, and I got really, really upset. And actually, I didn't end up going out and buying any sort of bra or sports bra. Why are you looking at my shoe? Until I was actually pretty much fully developed. Uh, I'm not sure how, hey, no, stop, not for you. How I managed to get away with that. Uh, I remember wearing really baggy shirts and just kind of ignoring the fact that I needed one. Also, right around age 14, Bye. I cut off all my hair. I went to a men's barber shop and they actually wouldn't cut my hair um, in the town that I'm in. They said that they only dealt with men. So we had to go to the women's salon and I asked them to cut my hair and basically what they did was cut it into like this perfectly rounded short sides round top so when I put gel in it it was like a little fuzzy ball. It's disgusting. I did one day of shadowing at the high school, the local high school that I, well, that was in the town that I lived in, to see if maybe I wanted to go to high school. I think I was like 14 or 15, and it was probably the worst day of my entire life. I wore a green long sleeve shirt and jeans. And when I got there, everybody was all dressed and trying to look better than everybody else. It's a really rich town that I lived in, so everybody was just perfect, I guess, at my age, and I was just wearing like ratty old clothes that I didn't really care about. Um, and then everybody was asking me what it was like to be homeschooled, and people were friendly, but I just realized how uncomfortable I was in my own skin. I started cutting myself probably right around that time, and didn't stop until a few years ago. It it started probably right around then when I realized that things weren't going to get any better. Once my hair was cut, I started letting it grow out again and I started becoming more feminine. Um, I felt uncomfortable that I looked like a boy because I looked so much different than everybody else. And people thought it was strange and I didn't want to be seen as strange. So I just grew my hair out again. And A few years later when my hair was long and I had finally found a place that I was comfortable being, I saw a documentary uh, 
uh, talking about people transitioning. And I remember just being completely blown away, and I couldn't believe that that was even a possibility. Um, I get really upset. I remember being very upset for a while after watching that and realizing there was something I could do, but didn't think it was ever something that I could actually attain. So I kind of pushed away the feelings again, and I went to college and cut my hair off again completely, but it wasn't necessarily masculine. I cut myself, or myself, <laughs> that too. I cut my hair, <laughs> or had my hair cut into a mohawk, um, and kind of liked to flaunt my body, myself. Um, I was in a relationship from 16 all the way through college with the same person. We went to college together. Um, so it's not like I was trying to attract people to me, but I liked I liked to look good, and I still like to look good. But I, I liked that people liked the way that I looked, and it made me feel more comfortable because I thought if they liked me, then I was good looking. I don't know. I had, again, of course, feelings of wanting to transition now that I knew it was possible. And I did a lot of research, and back in 2005, even, there was not a whole lot out there for anybody. Uh, there were, like, free websites where people would write blogs and discuss what they did, but there, were, there was nothing like YouTube. There was no community the same way. It was very hard to find information, very hard to find pictures. Couldn't I didn't even, I had no idea what I was getting myself into. And I got so frustrated and upset because of that um, that I just basically gave up again. So I went from that to being girly again and tried to push those feelings away. I was girly in the sense that I had my faux hawk and I wore a lot of makeup and I liked to dress well and pr provocatively <laughs> and I liked to look good again. Um, I ended up breaking up with the person that I went to college with and met somebody else at college and then moved to Boston, dropped out of college and moved to Boston with her. I was in Boston, I was there for a year and about halfway through the feelings came up again and I did some research and I found a therapist and so I went through therapy like a few sessions. I came out to my parents and they weren't thrilled about it. Uh, they didn't really understand it and they didn't think that it was something that was a good idea, especially since I was so far away. And then the person that I was living with, I was living with her parents and her mom said, absolutely not in my house. If you want to do this, you can do it on your own time, but not here. Which I kind of understand being that she's not related to me and we weren't married and all sorts of things. So we broke up, and then I drove home from Boston all alone. It was like a 12-hour drive um, with my ferret and my rats. <laughs> um, and I called my therapist and said that I had broken up and that I was moving back to Cleveland. So that kind of ended that for a while. Um, I was really unhappy for a while after I got home. A local gay club here. Um, and then I found that I really liked being there, so I'd go there like twice a week, and I kind of got involved with people that had a lot of drama around them. Um, kind of got myself in bad positions. I never did anything I regret, but I definitely was hanging out with the wrong people, and I thought that I really liked people that I didn't realize were unavailable or leading me on. It was very uncomfortable for a while started dressing a little bit more masculine and nobody seemed receptive at all to that for some reason they all just had their friends and I was I was still the odd person out always no matter what I've ever done and it drives me crazy I met Sarah through MySpace by accident and I really liked her so I met her and of course right when I met her I had I had had a nice beautiful blonde mohawk and I cut it all off um, so I had basically a shaved head when I met her um, and I was still pretty girly at the time, and about six months into our relationship, I came out to her that I had wanted to do this for a very long time and go through transition, and I thought I was a boy, and she was actually very receptive to it. I thought that she wasn't going to be so much. Um, I went out to my parents in a letter, or an email, actually, um, and I came out to her parents, and 
she helped me, as you know if you followed my videos, um, an enormous amount. In fact, she's probably done more research than I ever did. Um, she helped me find a therapist. We set up an appointment. Um, and right around this time, I was starting paramedic school, and the deadline was coming up that, what am I going to do? Uh, do I go to paramedic school as my female name, or do I tell them what I wanted my new name to be? Um, so I decided that my first day of paramedic school, I met with my instructors and said, this is my birth name, but this is the name that I go with. Um, and they never had a problem with it, and I started started testosterone six months through paramedic school. So everybody knew me by the same name, but they all kind of knew that something was a little different. So I have gone through a lot of steps in life where I've gotten super hyper-feminine, super hyper-masculine, back and forth, back and forth, many times. Um, and it's, it's interesting and I've talked about this in other videos, how I'm not nearly as masculine as I would have expected myself to be, thinking about it back then. Um, now that I pass just fine and I'm a man, I don't, I don't have the drive to be a super over-the-top masculine, manly man. I considered myself genderqueer for a while before I started my transition. I just kind of gave you a quick synopsis of the whole thing. Uh, if you have any more questions or if you want me to do videos on more specific parts, I absolutely have no problem doing that. I just wanted to kind of show that you don't necessarily have to say, this is what I want to do and I'm going to do it right now. I waited a total of six years before I actually went ahead and started testosterone. Um, I wasn't ready and I'm glad I didn't do it the first time. I wasn't, I wasn't in a in a place where I was 100% sure that's what I wanted to do. And when I did finally start testosterone, it was I, it was something I definitely needed. So, um, yeah, that's, that's it. All right.